Dr. Amani Omer, who will um, uh, take over. And uh, I will come back, like I said, at the end to do my presentation. Uh, Dr. Amani, over to you. Oh, hello, everybody. Thank you, to, uh, Professor Constantia. Uh, well, hello and good day to all of you. I'm here to chair this uh, third part of the technical session, Mountain Based Convention, SDGs, Mountains and Mountain Sustainability. Um, joining you from Abu Dhabi, um, assistant professor at um, Khalifa University, Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. My work is mainly on biodiversity and is linked to food security and restoration of uh, biodiversity in deprived uh, or degraded areas. So that's, uh, well, this topic is of interest to me. Um, so hello, uh, presenters and delegates, participants, and of course, organizer, Dr. Hasred all of you, and I'm looking forward to listen to the speakers, uh, distinguished speakers and the delegates uh, on the different issues or topics they are talking about related to the uh, technical session seven. And on this particular, we have a lineup of uh, very uh, distinguished uh, speakers and delegates who are going to start with, our first speaker is Mr. Tumor, I so. He is a senior advisor at the Earth, uh, Little Earth Environmental Public Organization. Uh, his areas of interest include sustainable energy, climate change adaptation, community mobilization, and environmental education, and also public campaigns. He uh, has 15 or more years of experience in mobilization of uh, youth and in their communities. So we are looking forward to talk to, his, to see and hear his thoughts on sustainable energy in the mountains. And of course, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank About you. 25 minutes. Thank you very much. I will share my screen now. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, so I hope it's visible. Yes, we can see yes. it. Okay, good. Uh, so thanks again. And let me uh, share with you. Uh, uh, our experience of working in high mountain uh, communities in the Pamir uh, in Tajikistan. Uh, let me briefly describe where it is and uh, what it's about. So Tajikistan is a small country mountain, which is one of the uh, five other countries uh, which make up the Central Asia region. And it's also a former uh, uh, Soviet Union Republic. And we, uh, my, my organizations, we work for quite uh, uh, for quite a number of years in the Bartang Valley in Pamir, which is uh, you can see the, the dot uh, red dot on the map. So as I already mentioned, we work in the upper part of the Pamir Mountains for quite a while, and most of our target villages they are located on altitude above. Uh, above uh, 2,500 uh, meters of uh, the sea level. A uh, few brief things about the energy situation there. So uh, together, I mean, when, when Soviet Union collapsed, uh, together with, with it uh, uh, disappeared the centralized delivery uh, system of fuels and lubricant to the villages. And uh, because of the landscape and high transportation cost, it's very expensive uh, to provide uh, those villages with their energy needs, like coal, firewood, and uh, transported it there. So, and then a lot of villages where we operate, they do not have access to power lines or to energy, or it's very severely limited uh, to small uh, hydropower stations, which not really uh, address the energy needs uh, of the people who live in the, in the villages. So uh, now most of the villagers uh, depends on biomass for heating, uh, for cooking and uh, heating their homes. And of course, uh, this have their own, its own consensus. Uh, of course, uh, first of all, people spend a lot of time to harvest uh, and collect wood in the mountains. So in general, if you 
it could take up to five months of like constant uh, daily activity to collect uh, the firewood. And then even we have uh, several uh, reports of fatalities uh, when it's uh, during the, the, the fire collection, the firewood collection in the mountains due to weather changes or due to some incidents in the mountains. And usually uh, these are teenagers uh, who collect the, the firewoods. Of course, it also uh, leads to the degradation of ecosystem because uh, the residents of those villages within this uh, 25, 30 years of independence have cut down almost all the bushes around the villages and also in the river floodplain. And of course, it's it's leads to degradations of habitats uh, and decrease the number of wild plants and uh, animal species. It also leads to soil degradation, of course, and soil fertility, which is important, especially in the uh, mountain region where the, we have a very scarce uh, resources of uh, uh, arable land. And of course, it's also provoke and uh, increase the risk of natural disasters such as mud flows or landslides. We also see that more and more uh, conflicts arise because of the scarce of the resources. And we have seen that some uh, land that were before like neutral land, nobody is want to claim it, but now because it's the only area where they could collect the uh, uh, amount uh, of uh, firewood they need, so we now see some competitions and conflict between the communities for, for that, uh, for that uh, lands. And of course, it's also somehow related with the health issues, because as you understand, it's, uh, it's quite heavy uh, loads usually, and it's quite heavy uh, work to collect uh, firewood and bring it to the village. And now we have villages which, uh, or communities where they have to spend like four hours to, to, to before they could uh, get to the places where they still have enough uh, uh, bushes to, to collect and use as a firewood. And so this is just a uh, few examples of what we are doing uh, and what kind of technologies we implement. So. Here is just uh, a solar photo panels. It's a very small uh, system. Usually it's capacity of uh, less than one kilowatts that we installed uh, within our pilot projects uh, for, for quite a number of years. Uh, and we usually install it in, in the public schools and they use it for the uh, IT or computers uh, uh, lessons and also for the lighting systems. We also uh, built a number of so-called solar greenhouses, which is just passive solar heat, uh, but uh, these specific greenhouses, they have a specific uh, constructions with uh, double side and back walls, uh, which usually filled with uh, insulation materials. It could be like straw or something like that. And then you could use it only like the whole whole year round without any additional uh, heating, which is also contribute, of course, to the uh, food security issues. We also uh, experimenting for quite a while with the solar water heaters, and now we have uh, four public uh, bathrooms uh, or showers room that uh, they have in communities that they use uh, this type of uh, equipment. And it's also quite good in, in terms of improving sanitations and of course, uh, helping people to, to save some uh, firewood. One of, the, uh, uh, one of the equipment or device that became quite popular is the solar cookers. It's like parabolic uh, solar cookers that you can see on the pictures here. It's very simple and easy to operate. And of course it's reduced firewood consumptions and save time and resources, and it's became quite popular among our communities. Very easy and very reliable devices. 
We also introduced a number of uh, various efficient stoves. Uh, it's cooking stoves and also uh, stoves for heating purpose. Uh, and in some of the pilot villages, we see that it leads to a significantly uh, reduction of uh, fuel consumptions. And of course, it's also reduced the harmful emissions uh, and safe cooking times. Uh, in some villages, we also do uh, thermal insulation of the buildings. Uh, we, start, uh, we started to do it uh, in the schools and later we converted it to more like training activities to show local masters uh, what type of materials can be used and uh, what they can do and what are the benefits of thermal insulation. Uh, another device that we usually disseminate within our uh, projects, it's solar lanterns. It's uh, very nice features. It's mobile uh, and they quite uh, easily could be recharged with the solar panel. Uh, such devices, they have, uh, has, uh, have USB port for charging uh, different gadgets. Uh, and it also can be uh, used as a table lamp, as you can uh, see on the pictures. So it's also quite, quite an expensive and quite nice uh, device that uh, our uh, villagers like, like a lot and use a lot. And of course, uh, a lot of our projects has a capacity building activity. So we pay a lot of attention to not only like to install or introduce the equipment or practices, but also uh, transferring uh, knowledge and skills to, to local people and to local masters. So we conduct uh, usually various trainings and uh, practical workshops uh, on how to build solar water, how to build uh, solar dryers uh, and so on. So it helps, uh, it helps us to improve the local uh, capacity on the local level uh, in the local communities. And uh, the introduction, of course, and dissemination of uh, such technologies and practices uh, solves a number of uh, issues and also bring uh, multiple benefits. So uh, some of them are we solving environmental issues because we are environmental organizations. I'm from the environmental organizations, and this is priority for us. And we use this sustainable energy uh, technologies and sustainable energy practices, uh, first of all, because we want to save environment and ecosystems in the mountains. Of course, it's contributing to sustainable energy use and improving, as we mentioned already, the sanitary conditions at household level and reducing the risk of uh, disease, especially among uh, children and women who constantly uh, use or sit next to uh, open fire. We also, by providing and introducing uh, these technologies and devices, we reduce energy costs for families because they have to spend uh, a lot of uh, funds when it's the firewood is not available, so they have to spend their funds on buying additional coal or additional firewood if they don't uh, have access to it or if they have some issues and they couldn't collect it by themselves. Of course, it's also reducing workload and freeing up uh, the time, especially for uh, women and improving uh, training and food security by introducing such technologies or, or practices as uh, solar greenhouses, for example. And it's also a very good way to demonstrate the alternative uh, alternatives ways of uh, development for communities and to show them that uh, inexpensive and affordable and uh, fairly reliable technologies can, uh, um, can really make a, a significant uh, difference uh, in, in life uh, of local communities. It's, it's, of course, it's not a mi miracle technologies, but they really make a lot of uh, difference on the ground. Uh, so with this, I would close my presentations and I would be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Timur. Right. So, uh, it's very useful um, insight into how uh, sustainable energy can contribute to uh, solving uh, issues related to sustainable development goals. Uh, 
like for security, sanitation, energy. So um, thank you for giving us this opportunity to see the work, the useful work you are doing. And I hope it inspires our participants to take uh, notice and duplicate maybe the same approach in their own areas. Our, thank you. Uh, our next speaker. Madam, uh, Madam, one minute. Uh, sorry. These all four lectures uh, have to spend 30 minutes time on the lecture. Right. Okay. So these first four lectures, these lectures, uh, you just can see the table. They are of 30 minutes each. And then the next uh, table in the delegate part presentations, they will have. 10 minutes each. Right, so in those 10 minutes, what can no, we do? No, we no, can no, 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 not just 10 Sorry. minutes. First, uh, all these four, four are the lectures, they are of 30 minutes each. Yeah, I know, uh, I know. I yeah. just said because Mr. Timur finished a bit early, so we have 10 minutes, so we could hear uh, if he has uh, more to add or anybody want to comment, you yeah. maybe, okay? So we'll use those 10 minutes so the next speaker will be on time. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. Yeah, Mr. Timur, you can add something if you want to more. Uh, I just want to add that I deliberately uh, skip numbers and figures 